Yep, starting the streams. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace uh, and my wife, Marion, is here. Uh, we are stopping by to talk to you about some things we have going on with the Odyssey Project, including uh, her, her pet project, which is Restoring Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters my pet project which is black men lead but we have some other things that we want to talk to you about we're going to start out with sharing with you a new initiative that uh she and i agreed that was something that we needed to really get behind and that is uh screen alert and we're going to talk about that screen alert in simple is becoming aware of the importance of monitoring your children's screen time being aware of what they're doing on their mobile devices, what they're accessing, how much time they're spending on it, and also being responsible in determining what is a good age to give a child a mobile device. Uh, we've seen people while we're out eating and doing other things as a family, we've seen people with kids as, as old as four and five years old with an iPhone. And it's just so much that we are aware of and that we consistently and continuously become aware of that tells us that we are losing our kids because their devices are rearing them instead of us. And so uh, Marion is extremely passionate about that. She's also extremely diligent and proactive with dealing with our kids. So I'm going to let her share a little bit about how she feels about it, where she stands on it, and then we'll talk about some of the things that we're going to do. Hello, everyone. Thanks for having um, us on today. I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, I'm passionate about it because I also have preteen children and I wish to keep them protected. I'm also passionate about it uh, because I've worked with young girls that have been sex trafficked and one way or another, they were misled into that industry. It's not like uh, the sex trafficker is going to come straight forward and tell them, hey, I want to sex traffic you. I want to use you to make money. They don't do it that way. They actually lure these young, unsuspecting females, and it happened to males too, by actually using people that are in their own peer group, people that are their own age and everything. Like, like that, you would be amazed by how many high school kids and middle school kids that are working for sex traffickers which means they recruit and they go out and they find the kids so you'll have one little guy that may be 16 years old and he uh, goes online and he looks for um, unsuspecting teen girls and he sees somebody that's attractive and he'll hit her up like he really really like her these people are good at grooming our children they will go several months uh, getting them to trust them and talking to them and acting like they are really in romantic like of them and uh, break down their guards and get close to them even make the young girl feel like she may be in love with this guy that she's never met her whole life and before you know it they'll come a day where there's a meeting point well guess what happens at that meeting point it can happen in any way it could be an invite to a party at which uh, some type of drug is going to be dropped in their drink and then they wake up chained up in a van somewhere. It happens every day, guys. I know a lot of people feel like sex trafficking is not real, but it is real and it's happening to our, our children. Um, another way is that they meet the unsuspecting girl with the guy that claims he really likes her and then there's a 50-year-old man standing there ready to grab her and do whatever else he wish. So that's why it's extremely important. I know you guys, we, we feel like technology is everything and it's amazing and it can do a lot of amazing good things, but it can also do a lot of harm. So we have to protect our kids from that harm. I cringe at the idea of four and five year old kids getting iPhones. It's happening. 
I realize that we, we like this status thing. Everybody wants to be known as that we have it all together and we have all these material possessions. So we want to give our children what we didn't have. So what? We think we didn't have. Uh, but in the process of doing that, you are jeopardizing your kid at such a more rapid rate than when they, you know, have this time span of, of like when, back in the day, we didn't have cell phones, but we still, we were still at risk. But not as much these kids are because they're online all the time. And it's very important for us to be aware of the fact that even though they're at home with us, as long as they have their iPhone, their iPads, or their, their laptops or computers, they are at risk. Because people are in the background communicating with our children, and our children are young and naive, and they're, and they're not suspecting of it. And it happens. It's happening. And we have to make sure we protect our children. So that's more or less what Screen Protect is about. Screen Protect is also about you're going to do, uh, we need to do random um, searches in their phones. So we're not going to tell them, hey, I'm going to check your phone at 3 o'clock. No. You're going to grab their phone when they least expect it. Maybe when they're just standing by you. All of a sudden you grab their phone, you look through it. You want to look through the apps. You want to look through their text messages. And they also have hidden apps. So you got to Google and find out what these apps are. So you can be aware to look through these things. Most of them have locks on them. Passwords. So your child is going to have to be present to give you those passwords to get in and look around. Of course, you're not going to be popular. Uh, but that's okay because then your children at least will be safe. So they can be, I'd rather have my kid mad at me than somewhere I don't know where they are and I maybe even never see them again. That's why it's so imperative that we check our children's mobile devices. Right. Someone is saying that they have a, uh, their children love to play Roblox and they just learned that there's a feature on it that allows them to have live chats with other people and this is going to be the case you're going to consistently find out that there are apps and games and and and, and different things that they can access on their mobile device their phone their mm -hmm. tablet that exposes them to risk and as marion was talking about when we grew up when i grew up you know, my grandmother could monitor me and she could closely control external influences. And what I mean by that, my grandma would, no, you're not going over that little boy's house. His yeah. parents do this. His parents do that. Right. I don't like this. So every household has a set of values that it operates by. What we do and what we don't do. How we carry ourselves, what we accept, what we don't. And what happens is... You have to go back in the day. You had to go out and go somewhere else mm -hmm. to engage someone to get an a, a alternative or an opposing point of view that may negatively impact how you are being reared. So your parents just simply said you can't go there. Mm -hmm. Now the external influences can be inside the house coming by way of mobile yes. devices. Yes. So things that you had to sit up and just say you can't go. And you were done back in the day. That doesn't work now because all that stuff is coming at them at 100 miles an hour mm -hmm. on their devices. And just like we were when we were teenagers, they think they know it all. Yeah. And they got it all figured out. And they're actually being set up. And we know this because we see the numbers yes. when it comes to sex trafficking. But we're not just talking about sex trafficking. Right. You got your little, your little kids trying to play grown-up games because they make it seem in this culture, in this society as if that's okay and then you're getting primed and you've got little boys trying to prove they're men when they're still little boys little girls trying to prove that they can be a woman when they're still a little girl and then you get them doing grown-up things before their minds and their their, their their minds are ready to cope with and handle the reper repercussions of their actions and it's our responsibility as parents as marion said i am not ever in a position where I desire to be the friend of my children, even my adult children, I'm still your father. I parent differently as you age and mature, but I'm still your father. I'm not here to be your friend because see, as a friend, there's this, 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 this desire mm -hmm. to be liked and accepted and cool. Yeah. You know, you want your kids to be cool. I, I, I don't care about being cool right. with my kid. That's not where we are about screen alert is about 
teaching awareness, we're going to literally be sharing with you articles that I've written, that she's written, that are written by other experts that point out some of the dangers and risks. We're going to keep you aware of any uh, uh, new, newly developed apps right. that uh, children are using to bypass all the things you're doing. And t as soon as you get one caught and you get that one stretched, here comes another <laughs> one. And so you got to constantly right. stay on it. You got to do random checks. You got to be there. And one thing I can tell you, between the two of us, we've reared 13 children. Right. And so what we can tell you is... I don't have one that I've ever set up and say, they, no, they won't do that. <laughs> because that's exactly when they'll double down yes. on you. And the very one you think won't will. will. And so what I've learned is I don't want you to do it. I want to think I've parented you so well. But the truth of the matter is I'm not parenting you in a box or a vacuum. I'm parenting you in the world that's moving 100 miles an hour and I can't be there 100% of the time. So I can't be the person who's always feeding your psyche. Right. So there are going to be times that there are going to be other things out there that I don't agree with that you, you consume. Mm -hmm. And it can have an impact. But that's why we have to... One of the things we do is we get our kids' phone for a certain period of time during the day. They can't have it. Right. And the reason being... Is that number one is what are you doing on a phone that much? And what you'll find is it'll 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 start to consume their entire day. Yes. They will literally just sit there and they'll just be scrolling or they'll just sit there staring at the screen. And the creativity dies. Exactly. The creativity, the desire to become, the desire to do, the desire to aspire right. is gone. I just want to scroll. Yeah, I just want to scroll. Just want to see what's going on. Want to what? It's, uh, even, it's even addictive. Would yeah, you say? Yeah. It, well, I mean, it's already been proven, and and there's a lot of empirical evidence out there that shows that cell phones produce uh, dopamine. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, picking up a cell phone produces a dopamine rush. They've even done studies where it shows that watching someone else pick their phone up produces a <laughs> dopamine rush you're literally addicted to a device right and then when you are drawn to that device you don't get to control what's on it and i'm now i'm talking about us as well yeah and like like I, 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 I tell i tell all of my clients for the first hour of every day i don't even i don't i don't i don't open my phone and here's why because how they tell you, you've heard it. If you're in, about any type of life or trying to make something happen in your life, you've heard how you start your day yeah. is how you end your day. Win the first hour, win the day. Well, let me tell you something. That's called when you start your day, you get to, to choose how you're going to engage life. I choose to be grateful. So I choose, to, I choose to approach every day with a heart of gratitude. I'm thankful for my wife. I tell people all the time, it's easy for me to start my day with gratitude because every morning I wake up, I turn on my back and I look to my left and she's laying there because I'm the first one up. She's laying there. I wait for her to take that first breath that I see. When she breathes, I say thank you. And I'm grateful for her in my life. I haven't even gotten out of bed yet. But here's the next thing. I'm going to go through the house. I'm going to get ready. I'm going to go do my meditation, my prayer. I'm going to do all that stuff. That's the first 30 minutes of my day that mm -hmm. I dictate what's happening in my life. Right. I don't take on no phone calls. I'm not looking at no text messages. Why? Because I don't control it. And then if I get something bad news or I get bad stimuli, the first thing I open my phone and I see is somebody getting shot. Yeah, on a video everything is real jerk. time now now right. that's in my psyche and it's in control of my day it right. sets my mood by the time i see anything negative i've had an hour of saying this is who i am this is what i do this is how i'm dealing with it and so that leads me to be able to manage it but when you pick up that cell phone and the first thing you do is look at it mm -hmm. sometimes it's some great news sometimes, sometimes it's good. not so I talk to God before I look at the cell phone and, so and, and, and how you sit up and do it. And it don't have to be an hour. That's yeah. my choice. My yeah. choice is, but you better talk to God. You better set your he mind. Be your source. Right. You better set your mind because the stuff that comes through that device comes at such a rapid pace in real time right. that you can be bombarded with something. You got people, uh, you got uh, a peak in depression. 
Right. Because now you got people who can't get out because of all these restricted movements because of COVID. And then that's that alone can create depression. But now you got all this negative information flowing. Yes. Now imagine a 12 year old, a 13 year old, mm -hmm. a 16 year old that is getting that we'll same go, we'll go lower than that you know, you know and uh, yeah, i mean you because got kids 10, now they're nine, nine and ten eight, c c committing have, suicide no but they have cell phones too yeah but, and so the thing is imagine someone that age mm -hmm. consuming all that negative information that you try to get away from right and and and, and, and not having the mental capacity emotional capacity to process it mm -hmm. you're setting them up for a world of hurt, a traumatic experience, being traumatized, right. and so much more by what they see on that phone are being taken advantage of. So what we're doing with Screen Alert is we're going to educate you. We're going to share with you what's going on with it. We're going to give you uh, the facts on how uh kids are, and like i said for every time we catch them with something we got to come back and look because they're going to move around these kids mm -hmm. are extremely smart and they're always looking for ways to get around it that's right. kids we did it right but the thing is we didn't have the tools that they have and we weren't as exposed because we could only get away as far as we could walk <laughs> right they can be in another country at a tap of a button yeah. And so you got to realize that's the world we're living in and you've got to still protect them. So, so that, what happens? What happens when you do find a violation? What happens when you get into a, a conversation on one of your kids cell phone and you realize they're having conversation that's inappropriate? What's what's going to be your action plan? What are you going to do to stop this behavior? Um, that's really important on how you address it because you don't want to be too strict or you don't want to do too harsh to push your child away and they never feel like they can tell you anything again. But you want to do it to kind of coach them to, uh, to help them understand, hey, I'm not looking at your cell phone because I'm nosy or I want to control your life. I'm doing it because I love you and I want to cover you and I want to protect you. And so... You know, those things that you decide to, on how you're going to discipline, just make sure they're not too extreme. And um, so a violation, what did we do with one of one of our first violations? The first violation is phone restriction. Yeah. We, we, we minimize access to the phone in a number of different ways. Second violation, we take the phone. Right. Uh, for maybe a few days. Third violations, they lose the phone indefinitely until right. we think that they're at a position where they can follow along and do what's expected of them. Uh, and there are a number of different ways that we, we implement this. And with each kid, it's different. Mm -hmm. You have to know your kid and know what is what. But I mean, even our 18-year-old is still, because we pay for the phone, Right. It's still she. She's negotiating now because she got her first job. She, well, do I still have to get off the phone at a certain time? Do I still? And I told her we'll work with her on that because we want to give her the space to grow. But we know that eighteen is still a long way to go to be ready yeah, for what the world ready. has out there for for her. Yeah. And so we're giving her some room to grow and get out there. But we're still right there to make sure that whatever little things that come along won't be enough to knock her off. Uh, balance or knock her down and so that's one of the things you have to look at anything you want to add on that before we move mm -hmm. to the next thing that's it. okay another thing we want to talk about is the importance of family uh, and we're, we, we're going to start with marriage and we're going to talk about this for an ongoing topic we're going to talk marriage but family and the, uh, the, the entire element and component of restoring the family. Mm -hmm. We've lost so much in the ability, talking about our children, in the ability to be able to teach and pass down strong values. It comes from a strong household. It comes from a place where there's masculine energy and feminine energy mm -hmm. merged together to create an environment for learning, growth, and empowerment. It is where you teach children about black group, group economics. It's where you teach children about respect for the opposite sex. It's mm -hmm. where you teach children about how to handle their emotions and not to allow their emotions to get the best of them. And that's where young boys learn that we never harm our women. 
women. We never harm uh, people of opposite sex. That's where it's learned. It's learned there. And so uh, Marion and I both have a very, very strong commitment to helping to rebuild and restore the black family. And we talk about it a lot. You know, baby, when you sit up and you're thinking about the black family in general, and we have so many conversations. It's so many different <laughs> right. directions we can go with this. Yeah. But uh, when you think about the black family nucleus and with all of your experiences, good and bad, mm -hmm. uh, what's the first thing that pops in your mind? The first thing um, is abandonment issues. And how does that impact you later in life? I mean, if you never deal with them, it it affects how how well you can have long term healthy relationships with just anyone, not just romantic relationships, but even friendships. Because what I'm finding out is that when people don't, when they have those abandonment issues or trust issues or whatever, uh, they're looking through the filter of all of that, you know, toxic behavior when they're looking at somebody else and this person may be coming to you that's extremely good for you and and wish you well but you're not going to know it because you have all this toxic energy and perceptions and you know your subconscious thoughts is just riddled with all that and until you can let go of it and, and actually get some help you know you may be pushing a lot of good people away that maybe god even uh intended on them to come and help you along the way but because somebody's always never really been there for you uh they abandon you whether it be your mother or your father you don't believe you're worthy of a stranger or another person to actually come into your life and add and build something with you and just really be there for you so with that you pushing good people away i see that a lot and people find reasons why they can't deal with you anymore anymore that's something that is in, embedded inside of them that they have to work with. So that's why I say when, you, when I think about it, I think that we could be so much stronger and healthier as a society if we face those issues that were brought on way back, you know, in our early childhood. And also to let everybody know that when we do have these issues, everybody think it's a stigma behind mental health. Well, guess what? Everybody needs it. I don't care who you are or what upbringing you were brought up in. Somehow, some way, this world has impacted you, either good or bad. Most of the time, it's bad. And we need to work through those issues and know that it's okay to say, I'm not okay. Mm. I don't feel good. I don't like the fact that, you know, I meet somebody and I can't trust them. I don't like the fact that I won't love so desperately, but I am not even in a place to receive it. I don't like the fact that I get on the defensive when somebody's trying to correct me, even in a good way. I don't like that feeling. And if you can say that to yourself, that you don't like the feeling, then that means you need to deal with that. And I feel like, and I also say, because many times a lot of people be like, look, you know, I work minimum wage job. I'm barely making it. I can't afford this. I can't afford that. Well, you can afford those Jordans. Am I wrong? No. I mean, that's up. I tell, I tell, uh, you know, I tell my uh, uh, potential clients all the time mm -hmm. is while most of my services that I offer are on the side of counseling, consulting, coaching, uh, and all of that on the are high ticket items, you know, what I tell people all the time is the vast majority of people that come to me can't afford to work with me at some level, but they have a warped sense of priorities right. and they will spend a thousand dollars on some uh, red bottoms, yeah. but won't spend three hundred dollars on a counseling that session sense. that will allow them to begin the healing process. Yeah. And so when it comes to relationships and marriage whether and it's so important then and that's something that I am just excited about with us is that we are not resting on our laurels we're not sitting around thinking well we're married we're good right. we have this love for one another we're going to be great we literally work on our marriage yes. and you know we literally sit up and we never sit up and think we're in a place where okay now we can just chill 
It's a process of working and learning one another and evolving because the person I learned last year isn't sitting next to me right now. This is an entirely different person. So we're evolving together. But we have such contention between us as black men and black women right now Mm -hmm. that it's almost natural for us to want to jump out there and go on the offensive. Right. I mean, even unprovoked. And the thing is, yes, there's a lot of things that I can speak of as a black man to say that we have really fallen short in certain areas. But at the same time, I know a bunch of black men on their game. I know a bunch of black men that's living. So we can't judge everybody. But what we have to do is hold one another accountable. And that's something else we do in our marriages. We don't sit around and let somebody be out there in space and not saying, hey, baby, come on back in. Yeah. And so that is extremely uh, important as well. So the thing is that we're working on with the Odyssey Project, with ghetto restoring ghettos, forgotten daughters, which is something I want Marion to talk about in a moment, um, is that we are pushing lo- black love. And right. black love begins with self-care. Self-care. Self-love. Mm-hmm. Taking Self-work. care of yourself. Because if you don't know how to treat yourself, mm-hmm. you can't recognize when you're being mistreated. Right. And so that's an important area. I'm going to let you take it right there. You can talk about the self-care thing, and then you can go into the, the beauty of it. And I'm going to share with you guys in the chat her link to her new, uh, her new uh, YouTube channel which is Restoring Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters. And you can go over there and check her out. And she's sharing some things from her perspective. She's doing her thing now, and I'm so excited about it. It's taken so long to get her to do it, but she's (laughs) doing it now. So you guys go over there, and you show us some love. But, baby, go ahead and talk about the importance of self-care and how that relates and connects to what you're doing at Restoring Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters. Okay, uh, self love, self worth, self care. It, it's all it all goes hand in hand, and it's like we have to have this completeness within ourselves. Meaning that whoever your source is, whether it's God, I lie, whoever you your source is, you have to be connected to your source. You have to be in communication with your source, so you so, so that you can have your guidance from your source and for me God is my source he's my everything he's literally the the most important being in my life and so me having that personal relationship with God I know him I communicate with him I feel him in my alone time away from everybody I have a prayer closet I do that daily it's even gotten um to where my my (laughs) my little grandbaby Samaj was knocking on the door because I'm, I'm in my closet and my door is closed and he's like open door open door Nana and what are you he wants to know what I'm doing I'm like Nana's praying one day she hope you're going to be down on your knees praying too but that's how committed I am and dedicated and I've been doing this for years even before me and Rick Rick and I got together this was what I did personally to connect to my source and ultimately and intimately God filled me with so much of his love and his acceptance it start teaching me how to love and accept myself, even if nobody else did. So I'm always the person that try to be better than I was. Each day that I'm alive, I want to be a better person the next day, a better person the next day. And I always want to think about others and how I'm making them feel and how I'm trying to elevate them and bring them up with me. I don't ever want to be higher than my sister. I want us to be up there together. And so... Uh, loving yourself has a lot to do with again you have to go back to the inner self because I don't care how you know magnificent we are and black people are magnificent how we look on the outside doesn't matter if this isn't take is if this isn't cared for so we have to work on our inner self I did a lot of inner work and I still continue to do inner work And that means, yes, I had to go and get counseling. My husband gave me counseling one time before we became romantically involved. And I had counseling before him. And when I lost my mother, I had counseling. So I'm always dealing with the traumas and the tragedies in my heart and in my spirit. And I'm continually, I'm speaking kind to myself. See, we have to learn how to speak kindly to ourselves. People do it all the time. We don't even recognize it. 
we jokingly say, oh, I'm just so stupid. Oh, I'm dumb. That was stupid of me. Girl, you know, and it's like we, we do that all the time, but we don't realize we're embedding that in our subconscious mind. Before you know it, we really believe it. So we have to learn how to speak kindly to ourselves, to have self-love and self-care and self-acceptance. So that way we won't be going to outside sources to get what only God can fill us with. Like the voids we have inside, our source, God, is the only being that can truly fill that void and help us be complete within ourselves. So it starts with us. We can't look at our husbands. I can't look at my husband, Rick, and say, I'm not happy. You're not making me happy. I want a divorce. First of all, I'm supposed to be happy within myself. It's, it's, yes, he compliments my happiness, but it's not because of him that I'm happy. And that's what I just want to say. Self-love, self-worth, and self-care has a lot to do with self. It's, it's not contingent on any other human being. And I hate, absolutely, absolutely hate when I hear a sister say, when I get married, I'm going to be so happy. No, you need to be happy right now. You need to be fulfilling all your dreams, all your goals, all your aspirations, everything. I mean, you got to know you got it going on even without a man on your side. That way, when the man come up that's supposed to be with you, he's only going to compliment you, compliment you. That way, um, you know, you won't be like, oh, he's my everything. He's my everything. And then he turns out to be this loser and your life is upside down. We can't make other human beings our everything. God has to be our source. So going back to what you asked me about self-love and self-care, it comes a lot. It has a lot to do with your source, who your maker is, who you have that personal relationship that can fill you spiritually and make you whole. So that's one. And then you have to deal with self. You have to do your work, your mental, your physical and your spiritual work on yourself. And then that's how you become a complete individual without needing other outside sources to fill you. Cool. So on uh, final thing, I just shared the link to your new channel. Mm -hmm. uh, tell them some of the things that you're going to be talking about and covering over there. Well, basically, I'm going to be talking about a plethora of things, just anything that affects our community now. Um, like we just spoke about self-love, self-care, self-care, self self-worth. We're going to be talking about single parenthood because I was single parent for years and how to deal with being a single parent and be successful with it. Uh, maybe even developing some single parent support groups, meetings, whatever it takes for us to build ourselves up, uh, mental health care that it's okay to not be okay and we can support each other in a group by doing that just whatever it takes uh our teens i'm very passionate about our youth working with our our youth i am experienced on working with trouble youth because i myself used to be a troubled youth and so i feel like god ultimately and intimately saved my life and i want to do the same for the young sister that's behind me so that's what this is about. It's about elevation. It's about empowerment, empowering our people to become what God has called us to be. He designed us to be a great of, we are great people. We don't understand that. We got the rest of the world telling us we're not, but we're, they're so intimidated by our greatness and we don't have to work very hard at it. It's just something that God innately gave us. And so I just want us all to know that, to identify with our true purpose and our destiny and to accept and love ourselves first before we look for any outside thing to do that for us. And on that note, we're going to get ready to get out of here. Like I said, I've shared uh, the link that you can show your support for the work we're doing at the Odyssey Project. I've also shared uh, the link for Marion's um, for Marion's uh, new channel, Restoring Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is basically segueing out of what you learned about Marion and her book. That book, if you have not gotten that book, you need to get it. That's one of the most powerful books, especially for women who have been traumatized. But men can learn a lot from it as well. Mm -hmm. It's a ministering book, uh, but it's taking you on a journey of a little girl mm -hmm. growing up in an environment that doesn't nurture her, mm -hmm. that exposes her to danger, molested at five, uh, experiencing rape as a teenager twice. And, 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 and going through all of that and becoming a, a young teen mother and trying to navigate that and trying to come up, but having a praying 
and God-fearing right. grandmother right. that steps in and gives her guidance and and she not she at a young age not really knowing but just moving through that. I'm not going to tell you the whole book. <laughs> but you're going to have to go get it, but I just wanted to tell you that Right. This is what this is the woman that came to me initially. I, I I worked with her from a counseling perspective, but immediately I knew this is my wife. But like uh, I I don't mix professional work with personal work, so I didn't initially come at her that way. But I knew I said this is her. She got what she needed from me professionally. She went about her business, finished her book, published her book. When she came back to me, she was Marion Wall. I mean Marion uh, Myers Holland's uh, published author, <laughs> and you know and everything. And then you know I, I let it be known that I wanted her to be my wife. We didn't date before we got. Uh, before we became a committed couple it wasn't any dating mm -hmm. it was me observing her her observing me and determining this is who I'm willing to commit to to doing something special in this world the world uh, the purpose that God gave me I believe she can insulate it she can incubate it and she can be something powerful and I'm going to do the same for her and that's what we've been doing and we want you to come along for the ride right. we are going to do something in this world and we're going to encourage every last one of you to do the same thing because you're special you're right. you're exceptional you're extraordinary you're phenomenal and the world is going to do everything everything it can to convince you that you're not right. but I'm going to be here Marion's going to be here and we're going to walk you down the path of your destiny and we're going to stand as a people and impact the world and That's we're going right. to be everything we're going to be and we're going to provide a new environment for the ones who follow us so that they can rise to even higher levels that's going to be our challenge right. and we're going to hold you to it and we're going to ask that you hold us to it and on that note we're going to get ready to get out here don't forget to show your love support the world Work we're doing but tune in here and on Marion's channel right. uh, y'all will probably know now I've already relaunched the Visionetics Institute channel where we're going to be talking about life improvement uh, personal growth and all that right. uh, so you between these three channels you're going to get that work you're going to get it <laughs> it's just going to happen right. but we want to we want to have fun doing it too so we're going to be jumping in Marion and I have uh Finally gotten to a point where she's ready to be more out front. This is not an out front, naturally out front, needs to be seen type person. That's not her natural personality. Mm -mm. You know, in the space that I thrive in, she normally gets back behind me and lets me do my thing. But I'm like, no, nah, this is me and you, babe. I need you out here with me. We're going to make these things happen together. And so I'm pulling her out here, kicking and screaming. <laughs> but I got her out here. And so on that note, we're going to get ready to get out of here. Uh, I'm going to get, uh, get off of here. But like I said, tune in. Go check out her channel. Uh, encourage her. Subscribe. Share it. Please subscribe. Yes, yeah, subscribe and share it. And we're going to get her numbers up. And we're going to show mad love, right? All right, guys. Love you to death. Thank you for dropping in. I'm about to get off of here. You guys have an Bye -bye. unbelievable day. Have a great day.